How do you find a good investment property today when prices are so high and rates are still so high? And it's especially hard if you live in a high price market like California or New York or pretty much any big city these days. I'm Kathy Fedke and welcome to The Real Wealth Show. You're listening to The Real Wealth Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. And if you're watching us on YouTube, welcome back. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe below. We really appreciate it. You may know I've lived in California all my life, and it is really hard to make buy and hold real estate work. The numbers just don't make sense. So 20 years ago, I started looking at other markets and kind of had to learn the hard way of how to vet realtors and property managers and renovation teams and insurance companies. It took a while to figure it out. So on today's show, we're going to talk about how real wealth vets property managers and property teams around the country. On today's show, I'm bringing on Rebecca and Grant, our property team managers at Real Wealth. Rebecca and her husband, Grant, have bought and sold and 1031 exchange their single-family rentals, short-term rentals, fix and flips, burrs, and all kinds of real estate. Rebecca was also a real estate agent with her own brokerage, specializing in helping investors buy and sell their properties and flips. In 2017, Rebecca and Grant moved from Sacramento, California, where they grew up, to Indianapolis, Indiana, to start a new life adventure and be closer to their real estate investing business. And in 2021, they purchased a new travel trailer and since then have been traveling all over the country while renting out their primary residence via short-term rentals. And they're here with us today on The Real Wealth Show. Welcome back, Rebecca and Grant. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Excited. For those wondering, you are sitting in your RV in Canada, making your rounds, truly living real wealth. We just love that so much. (laughs) We've been having so much fun going all around some for fun, some for business, and just mixing it up. And it's been really great. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely living the life. So I wanted to bring you on today to talk about the vetting process when you bring on new teams to real wealth. And when I say teams, I mean, property teams who find properties to renovate and make them you know, rent ready and have uh, property management in place to make for a turnkey investment for out-of-state investors who are busy and just don't have the time to do it for themselves and or builders who will just build brand new product and offer the property management as well. Uh, We had vetting systems, of course, before you came along, but you have really upped the game and we are so impressed. Uh, So let's talk about that process of, of how you find these, uh, these teams that are able to provide investment property for our members at Real Wealth. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot to it. And like you mentioned, there's kind of two different types of property providers that we're working with these days and looking for. And one of them would be a traditional rehab model. They're taking the older homes, making them like new, by adding all of the modern features, by fixing all of the big items in a home, the roof, the HVAC systems, the plumbing, the electrical. And when we are talking to those rehab providers, we are making sure that those are the items that they are taking care of. In addition to it looking great, because the tenants these days do want to see a property that looks great. And so we want to provide those for our members, for the tenants. We want everybody to have a win-win situation. And we're also looking for new construction these days. As you know, new construction is more of a (laughs) maintenance-free, quote, almost maintenance-free type of investment comparatively. And so we're out there, we're going to a bunch of conferences and we are just talking to people asking for everybody's referrals. And we're also really working on our um, online strategy through Real Wealth's marketing department to uh, reach out to optimize our webpage. And um, as we'll get to the end, we'll encourage any property providers out there to go find our page and reach out to us there. Um, So that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as what we're up to. And um, we can get into the steps that we take when we're 
Yeah, they always, let's do that. You're, there's, so we have a new team in Chattanooga, and um, there's you, you just did a very thorough vetting process. And I, I think our listeners, whether they invest or buy through our network at Real Wealth or on their own, I think there's a lot that can be learned about the process that you you take. Of course, you know, we've been doing this for 20 years and I was always proud of our system. <laughs> it's it's so much so much new and improved with you two because you have so much experience, you know, in, in, as real as realtors yourself, as investors yourself. Um, you've brought a lot of your systems to us and we're super grateful. So, let's start with Chattanooga, Tennessee. Like how did that hit your radar and and um, you know, what what made it a yes for you? The, the team there, um, they actually reached out to us through the website that they had heard of you, Kathy, through the podcast and through other various means that, you know, you get to let everyone know the real wealth is out there. But once he reached out, we were able to start reviewing the properties that he offers. And then we had an initial Zoom call. And then we peppered him with questions. We have a whole application that is very intense that asks every detail uh, about their business and about the team and the property management specifically. And he was very quick to get back to us with those answers. And once they get back to us with the answers, then we start doing our deep dive research and just look at every angle and so grant what are some of the things that we look at yeah it's through so our deep dive the first thing we look at obviously are the properties themselves um, do they cash flow what do the numbers look like and different markets are going to be a little bit different so chattanooga is more of a cash flow market so we want to see higher cash flows than we would in maybe like texas or Florida, some of those areas are more growth markets. So the cash flow isn't as much a, a, a big deal in those markets, but we do want to see at least those markets breaking even, um, even with the higher interest rates, because if they are breaking even, then that's going to be a good long-term hold for somebody because as the rents grow, their income will increase. And as the property's values go up, their, their net worth will increase as well. Um, so those are the, that's the initial thing we look at. We also look at the kind of neighborhoods that they're in. Um, we verify their rents. We contact other property managers just to act, ask to make sure that their rents are accurate, that they're showing on their pro, or, uh, pro formas, or they seem reasonable. So we do a lot of background checking, making sure that what they're providing in a pro forma is actually what they should expect from um uh, when they have a sale. Yeah, I love so that. that's just the property. That's just the property side. And if we look at also the market itself, we, and this is taken from um, just, you know, the way the real wealth has operated all along. And that is, we want to be in a growth area. We want to be where people want to be. We want the jobs to be a variety, diversity of jobs. And we want population growth. We want there to, just to be an excitement about what's going on in the marketplace. And well, like Chattanooga specifically, they've had a revitalization in their downtown that's continuing and it's booming and there's construction and people want to be there. and People want to invest there and put um, beautification into it. And so we look for all those things in these markets that we're evaluating. And then the next thing that we look at is the team itself. Has this provider shown over time that they are reliable, that they have experience, that they know what they're doing, that there's good references? And like specifically, we are just using the Chattanooga example. He's had investors following around, following him around for years because they trust him so much that they want to put, they, they just want to keep going wherever he's going to go, that kind of thing. And so... We love looking at teams like that that have a track record of people want to keep investing with them because they know what they're doing. So that's really important too. Another thing we really look at too is the team themselves and again, like how they actually operate. Mm -hmm. So 
we tell them up front, we say, you know, look, we want a long-term relationship. We don't want something that is a short-term relationship. We want this to be an ongoing, something that you'll always be able to provide properties for our members throughout the coming years. And then we also are completely upfront with them that, hey, we understand as real wealth and as investors, problems are going to happen. So we know that. How are you guys going to handle those problems? Like we want to make sure that they are in it for the people who they're, they're helping out in, in purchasing properties because something is going to happen that's wrong. And either it's their mistake, that, that so how are they going to do it? If it is their mistake, are they going to correct it? And then the other thing is, is if, if it wasn't their mistake and maybe it was out of their control, what can they really do to help out somebody? Um, those are the types of people we want to work with and we want our members to work with because we know that that person is then involved in the long term. And, you know, selling a property is just one part of it. The property management is a big piece of it because you're basically marrying that property manager for the, the life of that um, investment. So the property management is also a big concern for us, too. We want to make sure that that property manager has been around for a while. They understand the market. They understand what's going on in that area um, and they can get properties filled up. So. Um, and just making sure that that's a long, long-term long relationship with our members. All of these points are so, so valid and important for our listeners, who many of whom are passive investors. They are busy professionals. They don't have time to go fly across the country and do the you know RV around the, the country like you guys are and, um, and you know be able to do this deep dive on all of these things. You know, a, a turnkey provider, really, it turnkey means nothing. A t turnkey could mean they give you a key that you turn, right? It, it doesn't have any definition to it. We gave it a definition with our real wealth uh, standards of what it means to us. And you guys go in and make sure that, uh, you know, that, that, that the re renovations meet our standards. But I've seen turnkey, quote unquote, providers who really almost did nothing, they just maybe painted the place and left all the, you know, all the old equipment in there. Uh, so what are some lessons that you've learned over the years that a, a newer investor, a mistake a newer investor might make because they just don't know? Uh, because marketing can look so great, right? Someone can say they've got these yeah. great properties and from, from the MLS or from the picture, it looks fine, right? Until you pull back and you see there's a dumpster, you know, a dump right next to it or like power lines above it. So what are some things you've learned in this process, which is such an important process for real wealth and in, in vetting these different teams and providers and properties and property management and all of it? One of the things that we, we do for real wealth is to go out and actually visit the property teams. And I think that is the biggest way to find out like how that, what that quality of that work is and the quality of their team. When we go visit the team, we're meeting their property manager. We're talking to them face to face. We're putting us out there to say, look, we are coming out there to make sure that what you are doing is correct. Um, we've done a lot of flips ourselves. Personally, we've owned a lot of rental properties and we do a lot of work on our, cell, on our own properties. So we understand some of the construction things that are going on. So when we're looking through, especially rehabbed properties, we're looking at certain things to make sure that those things, items are being touched and that, you know, the roof isn't caving in and, you know, the, um, the faucets are all hooked up and everything like that. So we're making sure of that to make sure that our members aren't going to have problems down the road. Um, so that is obviously if you can go visit the, the, the market, that's great. Um, but obviously we know that a lot of our members are um, very much you know busy and, and entrenched in what they do. So they can't go out and visit every single property or every single location, but build that trust with the person. Um, that's what we do is when we go out there and we're doing that for our members to make sure that these teams are doing the right things. Yeah, so good. All right, so if if there is somebody, a builder out there listening, thinking, you know, I've got these great properties, they're not moving, um, it's been hard to sell because 
uh, you know, first time home buyers or, um, you know, owners just can't seem to make the numbers make sense. Um, so it, what would you say to a builder out there who has great product, but doesn't know what to do with it? <laughs> yeah. So selling to investors specifically like our individual investors that we have in the real wealth network is a great opportunity to move some more product. And especially, um, if there's a property management company that they can trust, then we do look at those partnerships to work together with that. And we ran into quite a few builders that kind of say, well, why would I want to sell to investors? Like it just hadn't occurred to them because they're used to selling on the retail market. But we think the investors are the best <laughs> buyers and the best long-term partners for many reasons. Um, they're likely to be repeat buyers and, you know, as, as you guys know out there who are the investors, you would love to find a great team where you could just keep re keep buying. And that's what we like to offer. And some of the other reasons are that the investors are going to be looking at this from a, a bigger picture perspective. And you could build the home to the standard that we know that a tenant would like, that are tenant proof. But otherwise, the investor isn't going to really care about the details that you're putting in that home as far as. Um, the colors that you're going to use necessarily. If you're just making it a normal, modern product, that's going to be great for them. And so you're not getting as picky as a buyer's as you might with a retail buyer. And uh, Real Wealth reason. does a lot of education for their members. A lot of their members come educated um, and at least have the, some of the basic real estate investing terms down and they understand it. So when they're reaching out to um, a new a team, they're typically asking specifically about the market or specifically about like certain properties. Um, so you've already got somebody who's understands investments, understands buying real estate. And then now they just need to be kind of understanding what you have to offer in that area. Um, and then also they're, they're usually pretty well qualified. So they have, they're able to get loans. They're able to purchase these houses. Whereas sometimes, you know, if you're dealing with, um, you know, homeowners, regular homeowners, sometimes, you know, you may have to do some change orders or you may have some issues with financing and you're dealing with um, other real estate agents sometimes. So it, it is a way to, to kind of open up the, the door to investing nationwide because well, our members are nationwide. They're not just in one specific area. So, Working with a you know somebody like Real Wealth, we can help find those people from all over the country looking in your backyard, basically, or wherever you're building. Yeah. And another thing is, some builders have the impression that an investor might be looking for a discount or a deal, or you know trying to haggle necessarily. But our Real Wealth members are informed as to what is appropriate for market prices and are looking for quality, first of all, and are looking for an investment that is good for the long term over time. And uh, yes, everyone likes some equity, but uh, the like a deep discount and haggle situation is not what real wealth is about. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that has really worked out for some builders uh, is because interest rates went up and, you know, they are stuck with homes they can't sell. Um, they don't want to reduce the price because that hurts their comps, right? How are they going to sell the next house that they have to sell? And they've got loans they've got to pay. They've, they've got to move the, this inventory. So we, as you know, we've got a lender who will work with the builder. The, instead of the builder discounting, the builder pays a bunch of money to pay, buy down the rate. We've got we've got builders paying us uh, buying the rate down to as low as four percent. Just went on the tour in San Antonio, and it was a great group of people that came to see the properties, and they were just blown away by the quality of the properties and the low yeah. interest rate of like four and a quarter percent or something that the builder pays instead of discounting. It's such a win win. The, the investor ends up making all the cash flow. The builder doesn't have to discount and lower their comps. It's definitely awesome that the lender is able to work with the builder and help the investor with that discounted rate. 
And yeah, our real wealth members are loving yeah. that builders that are able to offer that. And so, yeah, any builder out there who's not considering these special <laughs> loans, it's definitely the way to get on board. <laughs> yeah. So what are you seeing? I, you know, I, I was just on a, a interview at a show today, actually, uh, where we were, t- we were commenting on increased inventory. Inventory has increased a bit since uh, last year at this time, which is really good news for the real estate market. As you know, if there's nothing on the market for sale, it really makes it hard to invest. So um, increasing inventory is a good thing. It's nowhere near pre-COVID levels, but it has increased. Uh, this particular article, I don't remember where it was posted, but uh, was basically saying this could lead to prices going down. Um, we're not really seeing that in the markets that we're in. I mean, are are you guys seeing either a lack of demand or prices going down in the markets that Real Wealth is focused on? We haven't seen we any not prices, seeing going, prices down. going down. No. Mm-hmm. We haven't been seeing prices going down. Um, we've seen some rents not going up rents are as flattening quickly in as many markets as they have been in the past. So they've been kind of flattening out in some markets, but other markets, they're still going up. So like you always say, it's pretty much market specific. So rents are going to be market specific. Um, so it's, it's definitely worth looking into when somebody's saying that, you know, rents are going to keep rising. You really have to kind of look into that a little bit more to see what the drivers are on why rents could be continuing to go up. And actually, that is a good point. We do check in with our existing teams. We're not just about the new teams. So everyone who's been a team with us, we check in with them regularly. And this is a question that we ask them at least twice a year. And actually, we're coming up on a, in July. We're going to be really grilling everyone on how's your market, how's the prices, how's the rents, um, just to stay up to date on that. Um, but, yeah, we have not heard from anyone yet that there's been any change um, in prices in you know, in the down direction. I'm just thinking, I'm yeah. trying to think of all the markets and nobody yeah. has expressed that yet. And I think they're still surprised that there's still a lot of demand. Yeah, yeah and that's actually surprised me too, that with interest rates still high, I mean, a lot of us thought they'd be down by now. Uh, there was a lot of predictions that rates would be in the 6% level by now, and that's just not the case. So one would think that investors would be holding back Certainly, first-time home buyers are priced out, but we've kind of seen the opposite. It seems like we're uh, having more demand, more investors wanting to jump in. I, I, why, why do you think that is? I think people are starting to get used to the environment and accepting that you know inflation has come, high prices have come, interest rates have come, and now what? Am I going to just sit on the sidelines? No, I'm going to continue to build wealth for the future. And so I do think people are listening to your message, Kathy, which is what that has been all along, that there's no point in waiting. Um, And you might as well just, if it's right for you in your personal circumstances, you might as well buy your home to live in, or you might as well buy your investment home when that timing is right for you. And I think people are still seeing that that is correct. And obviously we all believe that if the interest rates drop down, the prices will go up as well. So to compensate that, because right now people are still buying even with the rates are higher. So if the rates drop, it's probably going to raise the price again. So it's good to get into the investment now. And then if rates drop in the future, you can refinance it. But again, if you're buying a, a San Antonio property at 4.75% interest rate, I don't know if you want to refinance that anytime soon. Yeah, right. Exactly. I know I don't. Um, yeah. And also it's just, it's, it's unfortunate, but it does seem that inflation isn't going to go away. Um, and inflation in assets is not going to go away because there's more demand than there is supply. And that's, that's not going to change anytime soon. So those who don't get in are, uh, are it's only going to get harder, it seems. It's not going to get easier, uh, which is, I think, what you just said. It, the longer you wait, there's still this hope that maybe prices will go, go down. And there are some markets where that is happening. 
but certainly not where we're going because we're going to markets where, uh, you know, there's job growth and population growth and, uh, you know, we're not going into the areas where people are leaving, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was just reading an article right before this about where some markets might be declining in prices throughout the country. And even the ones that are, it's kind of minimal, 3% maybe. And yeah. when you think about that in the big picture, that's not <laughs> that big yeah. of a difference, not that big of a movement. Yeah, because you're not, we're not flipping these homes, right? These are mm-hmm. long-term holds. So of course there's going to be price fluctuations. What matters is, is there going to be rent fluctuations, right? That's more important. And as long as the job growth is strong and stable, uh, along with population growth and you know, I, I can't imagine unless unless there's just a ton of new supply coming in. And there's only a few areas where that's happening. Um, yeah. Right. It's- that actually leads me to think of something, especially like it's our Jacksonville team. They are offering. I hope we're OK to say this uh, rent protection. It's a, a brand new in, incentive that they want. They want to show everyone that they how much they believe in their market and even though some of the lease up times are slowing compared to what they used to be they know that that doesn't mean anything in the long term and they want to help the investors to um, not feel any concern like they don't feel any concern over that kind of little bit of a longer lease up time so things like that are actually really cool too that um, some teams are offering and how much has it increased in terms of the lease up time um that i don't know exactly yeah sorry I'm, uh, yeah i'm not sure exactly how much it's increased but i know that that we were talking to the jacksonville team they're the on a day. webinar next week yeah <laughs> they're going to be coming on to talk about some of the properties that they have and um you know we were talking to them about oversupply in florida and asking if asking that was if that was a, a concern you know, and he, they were saying it's not a concern. Um, they've had a slowdown because of all the backlog of all the properties that were, you know, from held over from 2020 and all the slowing down and everything that they've built those out and nobody started any new project. So they finished those other ones and then now there's no new ones being started. So they're piling up again. So by next year, <laughs> it could be completely yeah, opposite. by next year Again. it's going to be the opposite where there's probably going to be more uh there's going to be still some some more inventory out there or not enough inventory for the people that more are coming demand. in more demand yeah yeah we're we're seeing that in multifamily some of those um, starts kind of never never started you know because interest rates went yeah. up and they they just couldn't make it pencil so they stalled on a lot of these projects which means this problem is going to be here for a while and could, like you said, worsen, especially if rates come down and people dive into the market and and the new supply is just not there. So, um, well, this is wonderful. I'm so glad you could be here to, to help some of our listeners be more cautious about just buying something they see online or through someone they heard was good or some guru you know, when we've talked to teams and teams that we have not, we've decided not to work with, they're working with other groups who never even came out to see, you know, to see the property or meet the team. You've, you've heard about those stories, right? Yeah. Or like some of our, I guess you'd say competition or other, other groups that, um, that, that offer turnkey properties haven't even gone out to see what they're offering. And, and that's really concerning. So don't, don't do that. Make sure you know yeah. what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's actually interesting when we do tell the prospective property teams, our process there, a lot of them are really impressed that we do go out there because some of them do work with other um, providers as well. And they're like, they never came out. They never came to look at us. They never came to see our, process or how we how we work and they they welcome it they want people to go out there and take a look at it because when you go it seems like every single time we go to a market we leave going we we need to buy here we need to buy here every time we have a property team we're like oh i wish we could buy more properties in these areas (laughs) i absolutely agree All right. Well, thank you so much for all that you bring to Real Wealth and our members and and, um, the ways that you're 
protecting them. And at the same time, I want to say every property is different. So even though the initial vetting is done, you still got to do your own due diligence. You still got to get your inspections, get your appraisals, go to the market yourself and see it. Um, you know, just because you've gone out and initially vetted doesn't mean that you've seen every property that they're selling. So uh, don't uh, use the investor checklist on yeah. realwealth.com. That's right. We've got an investor yeah. checklist that will help you uh, just go to realwealth.com. I think it's under the learn tab. I don't know. Under resources, so. under resources. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, enjoy your time RVing through Canada. Very, very jealous. Happy for you. And I look forward to seeing you uh, soon at one of our upcoming events. Thank you. thank you. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks having soon. us. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. If you'd like to find out more about the teams that we have vetted at Real Wealth that make the turnkey process a lot easier for out-of-state investors, just go to realwealthshow.com. It's free to join, and we don't mark up properties like some other companies do. We just receive a broker-to-broker -broker referral fee, so it doesn't cost our members anything to buy through our network. And you can check out those details at realwealthshow.com. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.